Hi guys, welcome back to yet another episode of the O Glorious Sanding Show here aboard good old Athena. It's probably not going to show up on camera because of the sunlight, but Athena's transom is now ridiculously shiny. I was really hoping I'd be able to finish painting Athena's hull this week, and I have been busting my hump to do so. I sanded basically all day Monday and Tuesday, those were some very long days. Then Wednesday and Thursday I applied the first and second coat of undercoat. But now it kind of looks like all of that hump busting might be in vain. If you're new to my channel, this lovely looking sailboat is Athena. I purchased her four years ago in Scotland and after a beautiful trip back to Denmark, I put her up on hard and immediately got started on a somewhat extensive refit, including rebuilding the entire deck, vacuum infusing a new rudder, gutting all of the interior and subsequently rebuilding most of the interior, plus a lot of other projects that are all documented right here on YouTube. Athena's gonna go back in the water in a couple of months and then in 200 58 days I've got my last day of work at my day job a few months after that Ava's gonna be flying to Denmark and then we can move in aboard Athena together and start cruising full-time the reason I am busting my hump to finish painting Athena's hull is because the weather next week looks downright horrible and I don't know when we're gonna get another weather window again with nice sunny weather with no wind that was the delivery guy pulling up with yet more paint in the spirit of full transparency, I will mention that the paint products you'll see me apply in this video are provided free of charge by Axo Noble. There are no strings attached to that deal. The only thing they wanted me to mention is the fact that Perfection Pro is intended for professional use only. I received some training prior to using these products and in the spirit of COVID-19, that training took place over FaceTime with a really cool guy named Jason. We'll get back to some of the useful tips and tricks Jason taught me a little bit later in the video, but all of this started a few months ago when I glassed over the deck hall joint. Strength was not much of a concern in this because the deck hall joint is already glassed on the inside. So after laying up a few layers of glass and well, weeks and weeks of fairing and oh glorious sanding, I could finally round over the outside radius and start applying epoxy primer. After having applied six coats, I sanded everything silky smooth using 240 grit and then gave the hull a thorough washing before moving on to applying Perfection Undercoat. On top of the Perfection Undercoat, I'm going to be applying three coats of Perfection Pro. I've already applied the first coat of Perfection Pro to the transom with Jason. It's hard for me to show you exactly how freaking shiny and spiffy looking the transom is in this harsh light, but for me to be able to apply the first coat of Perfection Pro to the rest of the hull, which right now just has the undercoat on there, I'm gonna have to do a lot of oh glorious sanding. I think I've got 30 to 35 square meters of hull area here, and I'm gonna have to sand all of that silky smooth with 400 grit. I love oh glorious sanding as much as the next person. What I don't love is the fact that I absolutely need to finish sanding the entire hull today if I'm gonna have even a chance at applying the three coats of Perfection Pro before the weather turns bad. And well, I just don't know, like I said, when we're gonna get another weather window. And that is it. Eight straight hours of oh glorious sanding. I am beat. In this light, you can get a little bit of a better sense of the awesome shininess of the transom. Now, looking at this, I think I might have gone a little bit too heavy. I think Jason was also suggesting that I try go a little bit lighter. So I'm definitely gonna try that tomorrow. And that was the whole point of applying Perfection Pro to the transom before the rest of the hull. It's a little bit of a smaller area. So in case I messed it up, it's not gonna be as much sanding. But tomorrow I'm gonna go for broke and do the entire hull. Timing is of the essence tomorrow. I wanna apply the Perfection Pro as early as I possibly 
possibly can so that the paint will have more time to cure before the dew starts falling at night. If the paint gets wet too early, it's gonna lose all of that wonderful shininess. With that in mind, I set my alarm for six o'clock this morning. I still have a lot of cleaning to do out there and also have to apply some masking tape. And if at all possible, I would like to be done applying Perfection Pro before 11 o'clock. Also, I've decided to go ahead and give the transom a light sanding with 400 grit. In between the second and third coat, it is recommended to sand the entire hull with 400 grit. Just take the shine out of the surface to get the best possible result. That was fairly easy. There's not really any texture I need to remove. It's more just to, like I said, take the shine out of the surface. So I figured a few hours should be enough for the entire hull between that second and third coat. Ooh, yep, there is definitely a need for some cleaning here. I'm gonna do that with a little bit of soapy water. The sun should be bursting through these clouds any minute now, so the hull should dry fairly quickly. Cleaning the hull can either be an uplifting experience or a soul crushing experience because while the hull is wet, if you look at it from an angle, you can kind of see whether or not you've messed up your fairing job. Of course, I've only fared the area above the Covida line, but so far this looks pretty dang good to me. I've scrubbed the entire hull with soapy water, rinsed thoroughly with fresh water, and now it's just a matter of waiting for the hull to dry. So uh, any minute now, Mr. Sun. From my very limited experience with the transom, Perfection Pro doesn't seem hard to apply, but Jason did give me some very useful tips. So don't start right on the edge. Start maybe a foot away and go towards it. Go, good. Well, remember, with, with this, you can stop when you feel like it, but when you're doing the Perfection Pro, you've got to get yourself organized in a way that when you start, uh, no interruptions. Okay. Especially on the last coat. So how far in should I start now? Should I just put it relatively close to the last strip? Or? I, I would maybe I'd maybe start about the, 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 the width of the roller away from where you just painted and okay. go up, go down, go up. And as you're going up and down, go to where you painted. And where you painted, you can overlap it, you know, a good 10 centimeters. It doesn't have to be just touching. It could be way over a good, you know, five, ten centimeters. Okay, okay. It's better you wear the hat and if you put sun, sun, if you put sun, sun cream, you can create contamination for the surface because you wouldn't realize and you'd be touching oh, your head. So, okay. by wearing the, the glorious hat, <laughs> yes. you don't have to put any sun cream. I hadn't even thought about that. Yeah, uh, that, that looks real good now, that image with international paint on there. <laughs> Is it me, Matt, or you made a, a dry spot there? Right about 12, yeah, where you had it there. Is that a dry spot? Oh, you've got good eyes. <laughs> Is it okay to go over that? Yeah, yeah. But that, that's the key thing you want to avoid doing when you're doing Perfection Pro. Yeah, no going back and no, no dry spots. Well, not, not going back, but avoid doing the dry spots. Okay, so again, about a foot in. Yeah. Okay. Don't get upset with the computer line. I'm huh? gonna say do the roll in section first and then do that last because if you've got any paint that falls in there from the roller, you can just spread it with the brush. Got it, got it. Another thing, Matt, don't don't get upset as you're painting to try and eliminate all the bugs. If the bugs go in the paint, just leave it. When the paint is cured, just click them off. Okay. So let's say this is the side of the transom. Like Jason said, I'm gonna be starting about a foot in, and then I'm gonna be working in sections of 20 to 30 centimeters of width. I will start in the center here, far away from the edges. Then I will slowly work my way towards the edges. And then once the roller is pretty dry, then I'll go over the top edge. And the same goes for the Covida uh, line. I'm gonna be very careful not to get near that with a wet roller. Once I start applying Perfection Pro, I cannot stop. I have to keep that wet edge moving forward. So I can't really move the camera around or do a lot of talking, 
but in a couple of weeks I'm going to paint this hatch cover with Perfection Pro. This has a lot of edges and tricky areas so I think this will be a lot better for actually explaining all of the little tips and tricks and once I get to paint this I'll also have a lot more experience with the Perfection Pro and Jason will be able to critique what I'm doing in this video. So once we get to this, well that should be the definitive list of Perfection Pro tips. While we're waiting for the hull to dry, I do have a little bit of good news. Now I've got both the washing machine and the dryer. The dryer showed up yesterday, so now I can finish building that little area in the forward cabin. Having those aboard is not going to look super nautical, but at least I'm hopeful that they'll be able to wash and dry clothing. The other bit of good news is that I've gotten Athena's new rudder back. Last week I sent this out to a machine shop here in town to have a new keyway machined in the rudder stock and also in the tiller arm. The machine shop asked if it was okay if they reinforced the tiller arm with this plate down here and I thought that was a brilliant idea. So yeah, I think we're basically ready to install the rudder. I say basically because I still need to replace this bushing in here. It's not a big deal, but it's something I need to do. And then of course also there's the matter of making the new rudder shoe fit. This is the old one and this is the new one. And as you can see, the new one looks really spiffy, especially compared to the old one. But the new one doesn't have quite the right shape, so there's going to be some pounding and brute force involved. But of course, that is all going to be stuff for upcoming videos. For now, let's just focus on painting the hull. And I think it's dry enough that I can go ahead and apply the masking tape. This blue masking tape I can leave in place so I don't have to reapply it tomorrow. But this is not very wide and I want to be able to just keep the roller going so I don't slow down near the edge. So below the blue masking tape, I'm going to be applying some regular indoor yellow masking tape. Now this I will have to remove before leaving the boat tonight. Like I said, once I start applying Perfection Pro, I cannot stop. So that means I can't move the camera. So I'm going to set up the camera and you guys are going to see the first section being applied. But then that is it. I'm just going to, like I said, keep going until I'm done. It took about an hour and a half to paint the entire hull, and I'm not gonna lie, it was ridiculously warm in that suit, but I think the result is worth it. The port side looks a little bit better than the starboard side, but I can't really show you the port side right now because the light is beaming in on that and it's very harsh, so you can't really see the reflections. But yeah, to me, this looks amazing. Keep in mind that this is just applied with a roller. It's not sprayed, it's not even rolled and tipped. It is just a roller. I am thoroughly pleased with that result and I gotta say the Perfection Pro, it goes on really nice once you get the hang of it and it's very easy to do, which I think was one of the first things Jason said to me. He might just barely have said his name before he said, it's very easy to apply. And I totally agree. I have no doubt that anybody out there with just a little bit of patience will be able to achieve the same result I've achieved here aboard Athena. I wanna give a great big thank you to Jason for all of his help. His support has been absolutely invaluable. Those little tips and tricks have really been a game changer for me. Like I said, Perfection Pro is easy to apply, but I am sure Jason has saved me a lot of time in trial and error. The surface of the hull is gonna remain tacky a few more hours, so I don't really wanna start a lot of work here generating a lot of dust, so I think I'm just gonna head home and take a nap. Later in the day, I swung by Athena to check on the paint job, and in the softer early evening light, I got a better look at the hull. She's starting to turn into a real spiffy looking boat, if I do say so myself. And I cannot put into words how amazing that feels after all of the time I've poured into her over the last four years. But of course, I am far from done yet. I've only applied the first coat of Perfection Pro. 
I need a total of three coats on there. And the second coat is actually the hardest coat. So I've enlisted the help of my parents. I'm inside of the minimum and the maximum overcoating interval. And like I've mentioned before, there's no need to sand in between the first and the second coat. So I'm not gonna be sanding the surface, but that means I'm gonna be applying wet paint to a glossy surface. And that makes it more challenging to avoid dry spots. But one of the tips I got from Jason was to have a spotter, someone that can look at the hull from a different angle to help you spot any dry spots. And that is why I've enlisted the help of my parents. Other than that, the process this is the exact same as yesterday. It is a two to one mix ratio with about 10 to 15% of the thinner number 100. Let's go ahead and get this second coat applied. And that is it. The second coat is on here. This feels amazing. And I don't think I've made any super big mistakes. I can't see any from here. And the surface is so shiny enough that I can read the text on my Sail Life logo. So that in my book certainly qualifies as a spiffy paint job. Having a spotter to help spot your mistakes turned out to be a great idea. I think I improved my application technique a little bit and I now feel 100% comfortable about applying the third coat. I started out this video by saying that I was afraid that my hump busting was in vain. It's certainly not in vain in the fact that I've already got an awesome paint job, but I'm not gonna be able to finish the paint job until the weather turns bad. So I can't finish the paint job next week, which is really annoying. I just, I really wanna finish it. And that has certainly been a theme this summer, a very frustrating theme, but it's very hard to get around the weather when you're working outdoors. If Eva and I ever decide to refit a bigger boat, I think we're gonna do that somewhere where the weather is more conducive to that type of work. As far as next week, if it turns out that the weather forecast is lying and I can actually finish the paint job, I am of course gonna make that my top priority. But if the very unlikely thing happens and the weather forecast is actually right and the weather next week is horrible, then I think I might make installing the new rudder my top priority. That would be a really good thing to get checked off the to-do list. This is definitely Definitely not going to be the last time I use Perfection Pro. I am thoroughly impressed with it and I hope you guys can see that the result I was able to achieve on Athena's hull as a complete novice is pretty freaking awesome. So I want to end this video by saying a great big thank you to Jason again for all of his support and to Axonobel for sponsoring the paint as well as my new favorite hat. It does make me look like a giant dork but it's really nice in the heat. And that is going to be it for this video. As always, feel free to leave a comment down below. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like. See you.